What's going on? I'm the Kid Gowie here with the game day to bring you the hot topic of the week. This week's hot topic, which NBA player would you consider the biggest all NBA snub this season? Yes, sir. You already know what time of year it is. It's that time where the NBA hands out awards and fans get so distraught. because their favorite player may be going home empty-handed. Fans had their debates on who should have won MVP, who should have won Defensive Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, so on and so forth. But now, the biggest talk of the town is the All-NBA selections. Now, first and foremost, we can't be too harsh on the people who made these selections. And the reason why I say that is because so many people showed out this season, but you're only allowed to pick 15 guys. As a voter, you're taking the top 15 players that you feel deserve to be on the team. Now that I'm done with that, little disclaimer, yeah, I get the frustration because there were a lot of quality names left off the list this year. They left off guys who are currently playing today, and not only are they playing, they're dominating, like Donovan Mitchell, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and they also left off guys who went off this season like Zion Williamson, Jason Tatum, and Russell Westbrook. Truly disrespectful. I mean, it's just a disrespect to the game, man. I think it's something that needs to be brought up. With that being said, once again, I'm gonna be fair. I personally don't believe there should be any change just to the first and second all NBA teams. I think the selections for those teams were accurate and shouldn't be touched. So that basically means if we're going to make a change, it has to be a change to the third team. And the reason why I'm talking about changes and focusing on the third team is because I feel like a lot of people fail to realize if you're going to put somebody in, that means you have to take somebody off. Because like I said before, you're selecting from a group of guys who also deserve to be there. So let's talk about it, shall we? We have to start with the backcourt. You have Kyrie Irving and you have Bradley Bill. Who should go over one of those two? Should it be Donovan Mitchell, the guy who led the Utah Jazz to the number one seed in the West? Possibly. Or should it be Devin Booker, who played with the MVP finalist in Chris Paul and was able to secure the second seed in the West? Or maybe it should be Russell Westbrook. You know, Mr. Triple Double, the same guy that willed the Washington Wizards to the NBA playoffs. Yeah, like I said, this isn't easy by any means. Okay, well, let's just try the front court. Who are we replacing? Jimmy Butler or Paul George? And who are we replacing them with? Kevin Durant? <laughs> You know, he only played about 35 games, even though he dominated, that matters. Zion Williamson? Nah. Okay, well, that leaves Jason Tatum. But Jimmy Butler and Paul George are both two-way players, and you get credit for both offense and defense in the NBA. Like I said, it's much harder than you guys think. So, in my personal opinion, if I had to pick one NBA player that was snubbed off the list to include in that third team, I would replace Bradley Beal with his teammate Russell Westbrook. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it does not take an athlete to realize how much effort it takes to average a triple-double in the NBA. Now, I get it. Russ has done it so much that he normalized it, but that does not change the difficulty of actually accomplishing it. And with all due respect to Bradley Beal, in my mind, it logically does not make sense and seems kind of ironic that he made third team, but Russ didn't. Towards the end of the season, all the media could talk about was Russell Westbrook's leadership, how he willed the Wizards to victory, how they were 15 games under 500 and went on a 17-6 and six run in order to reach the playoffs. That was Russ. Now, that's not to say that Bradley Beal didn't play his part. He's a certified bucket getter. He's aggressive. He does his thing. But if we're basing the all-NBA team on overall production and overall importance, Russ was really that key factor for the Washington Wizards, which means he should be in that spot. And please don't confuse this with me trying to be messy or trying to ruin a happy home. I just think it's very crazy that a guy who averaged a triple-double also broke the triple-double record this season, and he's not even an all-NBA first, second, or third team. I mean, we're talking about... I mean, it, listen, we're talking about... Basketball, people. This is an overall game. We're not just focusing on scoring. But if that's the criteria to get you a spot, then I guess I stand corrected. 